I'm really at a loss for words what to say. This is why you can't take news reporters seriously. Bernie, I don't even know how to say this guy's last name. Smikovitz, whatever his last name is, comes out. Uh, I think it was week one of the NFL season. It was an NFL, the first Sunday night game of the year. Special report at the end of the game about the fate of the Tigers next year. Reports coming out everywhere. Brad Austin's job is in trouble. He's in hot water. He's going to get fired at the end of the year, says Schminkelvitz, whatever guy's last name is. His first name is Bernie. Al Avila comes out and says, oh, none of this is true. This is all false. Everything is going to be reevaluated at the start of the season. I came on here making a video about it. You know, Brad Austin is going to be fired at the, end of, at the end of the year. It just seemed all too likely. You got a team that's in last place. Man clearly can't run a ball game. Clearly can't manage bullpen. Yet, reports today come out that Brad Hospice is going to return next year in 2016 as the team's manager. I have no idea what in the hell Al Avila is thinking. How can you, in any way, conscious form, think this man can lead your team to be a competitive team next year? Now look. I came out and said, I fully, 100% understand that this season is not all on Brad Ausmus. If you think it is all on Brad Ausmus, you are not a very smart baseball fan. There's nothing that Brad Ausmus could do. The fact that Dave Dombrowski gave him no bullpen. The fact that Justin Verlander was hurt for almost half a season. The fact that he lost Mickey Cabrera for a month. The fact that he had so many guys slump off. Cabrera was 0 for 20 at a point. Mind you, they were already done when he went 0 for 20. JD went through some rough patches after he was killing everything. He's lost Jose Iglesias. He said he'd probably be surprised he plays another game the rest of the year. Ian Kinsler was awful in the first half of the season. He had a bullpen where he's like, um, well, who gives it at least shot of giving up less five than five runs in one inning? To choose from. He had rookie starter after rookie starter after rookie starter to run out there. Kyle Lobstein. Buck Farmer. I mean, it, 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 it was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But that does not excuse his managing abilities. This man does not know how to manage a game. I went to the game last night. Now, I can't complain because they won. Matt Boyd had a no-hitter. That was a weird game last night, too. Matt Boyd had a no-hitter in the fifth. They had three errors in five innings. And the Twins scored four runs on one hit. And the Tigers had ten hits on one run. That was a weird game last night, to say, to say the least. Alex Wilson comes out in the seventh. Guy's got a, an ERA at 2-2-2. Whip a shade over one. I mean, he hasn't pitched as good lately as he has, you know, most of the year. Main, my, you know, rightfully so, he's pitched a lot of innings. But he has Neftali Feliz closing the game out. I don't get it. I just don't. Neftali Feliz has been terrible. He has an ERA of almost 7. 6.50. A whip of like 1.5. Yeah, he's not even striking out a battered inning, I think. I think he's like eight. I don't get it. You lose Soria because you trade into Pittsburgh. Wilson closed two games. And Bruce Redone was your, your closer. A guy, and he blows three saves and seven chances. And he was still, and he wasn't even doing good. But he was still so dead set on using Rendon as your closer. A guy that got sent home due to a lack of effort level. You're still putting Wilson in the wrong spots. How long did he use Tom Rosalani in big spots until he got sent down? Because he was so bad. Had Blaine Hardy right there the entire time. How long was he running Jabba Chamberlain out in the eighth inning to set up for Soria when he was getting crushed? Had Alex Wilson right there. I do not understand 
how you have a manager who's clearly proven he can't manage. Let me cite some examples for you. Commonly cited examples on I use on my channel frequently. We're in Houston. Two out triple. Jose Tuve's up to the plate. What does he do? He pitches to Jose Altuve with first and second open because he doesn't want to face Preston Tucker. Okay. We're in Chicago. Jabba Chamberlain's on the mound. Gives up a three-run lead and six straight hits before he, he pulls him out. Let's Melky Cabrera face from the right side when he was hitting almost 150 points left. Uh, from the left side, he's hitting almost 150 points less from the right side at that point in the season. They lose that game. Playing the Astros. Anibal Sanchez. Gives up early runs. They score five runs off Feldman. Sanchez at 115 pitches in the sixth. Let's him stay out there. Gives up the game to Preston Tucker in the sixth inning. They lose. There's three instances right there. Out of a billion so far this season that this man can't manage a ball, ball club. Another night. Brings out Al Albuquerque. Runner on third. He's looking for the strikeout. And... I forget if it was a national televised game. It was this thing with Saturday night game. I'm not. I can't recall. But it was last week. And he says, "Watch out for the slider in the dirt, you know, because it's gonna it might allow the runner to score." Second pitch, Albuquerque throws slider in the dirt, allows the runner to score. Albuquerque then walks a batter, gives up a hit, walks another batter. Awesomeness refuses to take him out. They lose that game. Brad Ausmus cannot manage a bullpen. Brad Ausmus has no idea when to take out his pitchers. I have never played a game in my life at the major league level. Hell, I'm an E-League softball player. Do I know more about baseball than Brad Ausmus? Probably not. But when you're a catcher who caught in the big leagues for 18 years... And your starter had already given up a couple of home runs. Or your starter is starting to get hit hard. Yet you leave him out there to get wrecked some more. I think with a, like 110 pitches in the sixth and there's like two guys on with an out. I think it's time to take him out. But what is about... And here's the thing. I understand you can't use the same relievers every single night. This isn't the Yankees where you give the ball to Justin Wilson and Dylan Batances and Andrew Miller every single night. This isn't the Royals, Wade Davis and Luke Hochaver and, you know, Greg Holland, whatever it is, you know, Ryan Madsen, Frankie Morales, whatever. I would not be mad, though, if, say, two out of four times... When that reliever, the correct reliever is available, like you got a lefty coming up in a big situation in the seventh inning when you're up by one, yet you leave Al Albuquerque out there instead of Blaine Hardy because there's going to be a lefty, a righty following him. You know, there's only one out in the inning. You don't want to use Hardy for one batter. You want to use Al Albuquerque because then there's a couple of righties after that. You can't do that. That's why they've lost so many games. When you have Al Albuquerque out there not throwing strikes and all he can throw is a slider for a strike, you know, because his fastball... That's another thing, man. That guy's been terrible this year. You know, all he can throw is a slider for strikes. He can't throw his fastball for strikes to save his life. At all. Last night at the game, I think he threw three fastballs and I think one of them was a strike. Everything else was sliders. That's why he gets crushed so much. Because teams all he knows is he can throw is a slider for a strike. But when you consistently put guys out there that you know are, are getting lit up throughout the entire year and you keep putting them in high leverage spots, high leverage spots, and you have a guy like an Alex Wilson who hadn't pitched in two days, but you want to continue with an Al Albuquerque or a Chapa Chamberlain or a Tom Grizzolani, you know, you're not going to your better relievers that you you know that have gotten the job done more than not when they're fresh and available or for over other guys. You know, like I said, I understand that you have to mix it up. You can't use the same guys every single night. It's not plausible. You can't do it. You can't. You have to take the risk sometimes and put out those dudes. But if you get beat 
with your best on the mound, I'm not going to complain because you put your team in the best position to win that game. If you got Justin Verlander out there with 110 pitches and the seventh inning and the base is loaded with two outs and it's a right-handed bat up there, you know, and you didn't want to go to Alex Wilson, I understand that. That's your horse. That's your ace. He gets beat, you got beat with your best. Say Alex Wilson is available and all you had was Al Albuquerque, you know, or Drew Verhagen. Fine. You get beat with Verlander on the mound, I'm cool with that. Say Alex Wilson's out there, you know, in a safe situation and you lose a game, you know, or when he's doing like that closer by committee BS with Rondon and, and, and Wilson in the ninth for the first two weeks that Soria was gone and you lose a game with your best son on the mound, fine. Fine. I have no problem with that. But when you're consistently putting your team in bad positions, game after game after game, with your pinch hitting V-Mart and Miggy in tie games, you know, or pinch running him in tie games with two outs in an inning because you're trying to force the issue to try to get the run because you want to steal a base, you know, because you're trying to win before extra innings. Or, you know, your bad bullpen management and not yanking out your pitchers in time. You know, when they've been getting hit up and they've been, had pressure pitches throughout the entire game through the first five innings of work. That is what I'm talking about. Those are the reasons why Brad Ausmus should not be managing this team next year. Clear cut, simple as that. That is why he should not be managing. Now, that's why I want you guys to understand. I don't care that the Tigers are fifth place. I'm not putting that on Osmus. Osmus has probably cost him about eight or nine wins this year due to his crap managing. Even with those eight or nine wins, the Tigers are the twins. They're like two games out of the wild card with, you know, a week to play with no shot. Whatever. I don't put that on him. I don't put the record on him. I put the fact that he does not know how to manage game time situations. He is an awful bullpen manager. He is an awful guy, an awful uh, judge of when the Yankees pitchers. Is, you know, his team's base running ability. That's another thing under Ausmus. What happened from the first year when the Tigers were a great base stealing team? You know, and you're going to get caught some, you know, when you, when you force the issue with stealing bases. But how many damn times has this, these got runners picked off? How many times this year? The, 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 the Tigers this year, when it comes to getting picked off on first, they got to make a top five team. Their base running was atrocious. Anthony goes. That guy can't steal a base to save his life. The one thing that he's supposed to be good at in speed and defense, he's a graded out as a below average defender this year. He can't steal. And then their base running's been so bad, that falls on the manager. You're supposed to have your team out there ready to play. You're supposed to practice fundamentals. I mean, I understand if it's a tough lefty. You know, you got like, like a Kenny Rogers-esque guy on the mound who's real nasty. But I mean, some of these pickoffs have been atrocious. That's another thing is this preparation. is a way he gets his team ready to go. That's been another thing Austin has been terrible at. That falls on him. Preparation, teaching these guys fundamentals, having your team ready to play, bullpen management, pitching, uh, changing your pitcher management, substitution management. Those are things a manager is supposed to control, which he has done a piss poor job of doing this year. That is why Oswald should be fired. Not because of the record, not because where they sit. I don't put that on him because they have had a lot of injuries this year and a lot of bad pitching. And Osmus ain't the one on the mound chucking up gopher balls like, you know, it's beer league softball and the guy is underhanding it. Because that's what the Tiger staff was like this year. But he's going to be back next year. And I'm infuriated about it. I am. I didn't want to see Ron Gardner here. Ron Gardner has won anything. He had a lot of good teams in Minnesota. He, but he couldn't even beat the Yankees once. I didn't want to see Gardenhire here. I didn't want to see Manny Acta. I didn't want to see Lloyd McClendon. But I wanted to see someone in the dugout other than Brad Ausmus. And I don't know what Alavila sees. But let me tell you this. They keep Ausmus next year. Which they are. And they give this man a bullpen. And they give this man some starting pitching. And they go out and they get a left fielder. They let Rajay go. They get someone to pair up with Ghost in center. They get 
three, four relievers. They get a, a good lefty. They get a good righty. They get someone that, you know, they could potentially close. They get a starter. And they come out and they win under 77 games next year with an improved team, with a healthy Miggy, with a Verlander all year, a hopefully healthy Sanchez, Derek Norris all year. And they come out and they lay a dud. If Alavila does not fire Brad Ausmus because he pulls the same BS next year that he did this year with his bullpen management, with his team camp base run, his ability to know when to take out starting pitching, he's not fired next year, and he improves this team, it's all on Ausmus. So guys, Brad Ausmus will be back next year, and I'm not happy about it. That's all I got for you guys today. I'll be back if any more Tigers news happens. And uh, hope you're enjoying the John Check Sports Media Network. Because, uh, yeah, I'm going to be complaining a lot about Brad Ausmus next year if it continues. So, have a good one, guys. And as always, thank you for all the new subscribers I've been getting. And uh, hope you're enjoying the new network. Maybe.